Hi everyone! In this video, we will be testing a forge lined with a fireproof putty made from ingredients that can probably be found in your kitchen. This is a type of material known as an intumescent, which is a fancy way of saying it expands when heated, in this case into a type of carbon foam with extraordinary resistance to high temperatures. I have a 20 minute video packed with information about the science and history of intumescent materials like this, so you can go back and watch that video if you're interested to learn more of the details. This time we're going to be putting my putty formula to use to see how practical it might be in a real world application. My aim for this forge design was to make it as easy to make as possible, so that if someone wants to get into blacksmithing or metal casting, they can give it a try for only a few dollars in cost and about 10 minutes in build time. The casing for this forge is a metal coffee can, which have become a little bit uncommon to find on store shelves, but you could instead use a large soup can or just ask around. I'm sure someone you know has a coffee can collecting dust in their garage. Now, for a large coffee can like this one, I found that it takes about a thousand grams of fireproof putty to line the inside. The mixture I'm using is 400 grams of flour, then 200 grams each of cornstarch, powdered sugar, and baking soda. On top of this 1,000 gram batch, I also add an additional 40 grams of borax, which is not strictly necessary, but it does add a lot of durability to the carbon foam that this forge lining will generate. It takes about 250 grams of water to turn these powdered ingredients into a putty with a clay-like consistency. Once this is thoroughly mixed, it can be used to line the coffee can, trying to make it an even thickness over the bottom and the sides. It takes a little bit of care if you want to be a perfectionist about how the coating looks, but anyone that grew up with Play-Doh is qualified for the job. The final step is to drill a hole through the can, with just a little bit of space between it and the back of the forge. I used a stepped drill bit, which is about ideal for this task, but you could even just punch through the can with a nail and peel the metal back with a pair of pliers. The important thing is that you end up with a hole large enough for a torch nozzle to fit through. This is the only part of the project that requires a little bit of expense. You need a quality torch, one with a soft flame like this, not a pencil flame. This is a Burnsomatic TS-8000 torch, which works very well and costs around $35 or $40. The nozzle goes through the side of the can, and we can play with the angle of the flame to get a nice spiral on the inside of the forge once we fire it up. Now, before I do so, it's very important to have good ventilation, or else you risk poisoning yourself with carbon monoxide. Only use a gas forge outdoors, or in my case, with very good ventilation in my workshop. And with that, let's turn on the torch. You can see the forge lining quickly blackens, which is exactly what we're looking for as it forms a carbon foam. The black color is actually helpful in allowing the carbon to easily radiate heat, which brings the forge's internal temperature up very quickly. At the same time, the carbon foam is quite insulating, so I'm able to touch the outside of the can without getting burned. At least for now. If I left the forge running for long enough, the outside would eventually get hot. But that's what the insulation value is all about, to slow that transfer of heat, so the outside stays cool for a longer period of time. The first forge I built to test this concept, I fired up right after lining the can, and so the excess moisture in the putty caused it to expand more than normal, almost like a rising bread dough. This result doesn't look very pretty, but the function was still very successful in heating metal to forging temperatures. Once I was satisfied that this forge could work properly on its side, I then turned the can upright so I could put a crucible inside to melt aluminum. 
You'll see I put a filter in front of my camera lens at certain parts of the footage, which allows you to see through the flames more clearly by filtering out the yellow color. This is similar to the filters used by observatories, which filter out the yellow light pollution from sodium street lights to allow them to see stars more clearly. From when I turned on the torch to the point that all of my aluminum scraps had melted, only about five minutes had passed for about 40 grams of aluminum. By my experience, that's a pretty quick warm up time but I'd be interested to hear from others who have gas aluminum foundries how long it usually takes for them to heat up. In any case, this one definitely works, and it works pretty well. Now, I allowed the lining of this forge in front of me to dry for a few days before firing it up, so that the expansion would not be quite as aggressive as my first test, but this is mostly just a matter of cosmetics. The performance of my previous test forge was just as good. It might be beneficial to take a little extra putty and mold it around the mouth of the can to give it a bit of a constriction to keep more of the heat in. Keep in mind that the carbon this lining is made from will eventually burn through and need to be replaced. This isn't meant to be a forge that lasts a lifetime, but the lining is very cheap and super easy to replace whenever you need to. Another benefit of using this intumescent material as a forge lining is that you don't need to use a coffee can. You can use containers that are any shape or size. For this reason, it might even be useful to people that already have a professionally made forge for those times that they need to heat something up that doesn't quite fit in the forge they have. They could just build a temporary forge, use it for that one item, and then set it aside or dispose of it. They're easy to make. You can use them however you like. Let me know if you build a forge like this for yourself. I'll be interested to hear how it works out in the comments below. Now, if like me, your blacksmithing skills are still in their infancy and it will be a long time before you're making quality Damascus steel blades, you might be interested in the meantime to pick one up from my sponsor, Bespoke Post. I got this awesome little knife from one of their recent boxes, which is full tang, five millimeter thick blade, and available at a significant discount through a membership with Bespoke Post. You can select to receive any one of the many different subscription boxes they offer each month, and your membership also gets you exclusive prices in their online store. Look at this. This box contains a Philips light bridge and two smart LED bulbs. Look up the prices for this system. It's currently selling for over $100 elsewhere. If you'd like a deal on awesome stuff, Bespoke Post is a great place to go. There's no commitment, you can cancel membership at any time, and even as a non-member, you can still buy boxes and individual items in their store. Check them out through the link I've placed in the video description below. Well, I hope this video has proved useful to you, whether you plan on building your own forge, or if this has simply inspired some ideas for projects of your own. Let me know in the comments below all the different projects you have going on. That's the kind of stuff I really love to hear about. Thanks for watching this video. I'll see you next time.